Filmmakers, how are you doing today? I hope you're all having an amazing day. Today we're going to talk about how to ask a question when you need help. So stick around, I'll be right back. So when you're stuck and you need help, there is always places you can ask for help and I love emails from people that have questions about either my projects or projects they're working on themselves. You just you need to make sure that you provide the correct information. Sometimes I get emails from people that just want me to do everything for them and that's not how it works. So in today's vlog we're going to talk about what you need to do to ask the correct question and what information you need to provide to ask the questions that are going to help you because it's going to make you happy because you're going to get the information that you need to complete your project. So what do you need to include in your question? Well it's really simple. You need an example sketch and that is often not your completed sketch but just the part of the sketch that is functional where you have the issue. And sometimes that's the, your complete sketch but most of the time you can pare it down to a sample sketch that actually shows where the problem lays. Always give what libraries you use, where you got them from, what version of Arduino IDE you use, what operating system you use is sometimes also relevant and also give what hardware components you're using, the versions of it and how you've connected that. So let's break that down a little bit so you will understand it better. So the first problem that people run into is often how to connect your hardware. So a good way to start if you are really new at it and even if it's a really new component to you is to buy the components from companies uh, that provide you with support already like for instance Adafruit, uh, Sparkfun, Polulu, uh, Seed Studio or Factory I always get that but I, wanna, I will put some links in my blog to these uh, companies and as usual the link to my blog is in the description below if you use components like that you already know how to connect them correctly now before you stick them all together make them work separately with their own little sketch and see that you get the information out of it that you're expecting so you know that it's connected correctly and then you start adding them one by one together until you got your completed project now if one of these components suddenly stops working there's a conflict and just figure out which two pieces of hardware are conflicting and now you got a question to ask. So now you understand what the problem is and you can look like you've done your homework and people enjoy that. So when you ask the question use something like Fritzen uh, again I will put a link in my blog to that software which helps you drag components onto a, um, a breadboard and connect them so that people see how you've cut it connected give the libraries you use, where you got them from, what version if you know um, you basically uh, give a sample sketch again you pare down your total sketch just to basically say okay I'm trying to read this information from this sensor and write it to this SD card and this is how I'm doing it you don't have to give the full sketch just like a functional sample sketch give the, the, the problem that you're having, explain it in detail as much as possible and people will help you. So next we're gonna debug our sketch. So we know that the hardware is working but some part of your sketch is not functioning the way that you want and it often can be uh, because you're trying to convert a 
double into an integer or an integer into a double and then your calculations don't work anymore and it's hard to figure out where that happens programmers among us will understand when I say breakpoint if you write a application for Windows 10 and you're working on a Windows 10 machine the software that the that the IDE, the in, uh, development environment that you use, will have a capability to set a breakpoint in your code and it will step through your code while the application is running and show you what the variables are doing. Now, with an Arduino, you can't do that because you need to compile and put it on your Arduino. So, what we use is serial prints. Um, you print basically the value of your variables to your uh, serial monitor and that way she can see what the values are. Now, um, you never see that in my code, that's because I delete them out because it's ugly, it's clutter um, and uh, it sometimes makes everything a little bit weird looking and that's why I I use it all the time and this is how I get to my final projects and if I would not use it I would never figure out half the time where the problem lays so use these this debugging and then if you then still are stuck on don't understand what is happening um, you can create again the sample sketch pair it down to the point where you need help with and give all the information that they need and people can help you sometimes you just don't know how to convert something to something um, because I mean you've never done it before a good place to go to is the reference library uh, from Arduino itself I put a link of that in my blog so you guys can find it. Um, there they have everything organized by functions, by syntax of how language works, uh, what variables you can use and it gives you a lot of information. They even give you example sketches um, and explanations how they work. You could still get stuck with that and not understand what you're talking about but at least you are not saying I've got this what do I do with that you can say okay I've got this string which contains a number how do I get it back to a number and what should I use a double a float or an integer so you can ask intelligent questions and people can help you now you've formulated your question and you get an answer of somebody who writes this really cool piece of code but it is like Greek to you. Now you don't have a clue what it means. As long as you understand what you need to put in it and what comes out of it is correct, it's okay to use that code. You don't need to understand everything. Uh, sometimes just accept it. Uh, just because their level is here and your level is here, there is a long period of time for you to get to the level that you understand it. I call that black boxing. So you got a piece of code that's a black box. You know what goes in, you know what comes out, but you don't understand how it works internally. And that's totally okay. You get to complete your project and it gives you a reason to research certain things and learn from that. And then you can ask questions intelligently again is why do we do this this way and not that way? And people will be able to answer you and you can understand these answers because you've done the research. Now, Finally, the point of this all is that uh, there's a lot of people out there willing to help you, including me. I love to help people and so keep on sending me those emails and uh, questions. 
but those people are doing it on their own time and on their own dime so they're going to help you more and better if they see that you're serious about it and that you've done your homework I mean sometimes you just can't find the answer and that's all okay as long as you provide as much like even the things that you've tried that did not work um, so that they can see your thought process and help you in the most uh, in, the, in the best way that they can think of um, always be proud of what you do don't be embarrassed that you don't know because we all been there at one point in time and uh, stand behind your work but be prepared to show to people that you actually have done the work so this is the end of another vlog if you enjoyed it please subscribe to my youtube channel and check that little bell so you get notifications when the next video comes up um, or subscribe and follow and like me on Facebook my Facebook page will be in the link below in the description so you can follow that or go to my blog again the link to my blog is in the description below go to the bottom fill out the form and subscribe to my newsletter and get a monthly newsletter of what I've been up to this month also leave comments at this video um, if you think I am wrong or if you want to add more information to it I like to see that um, if it's rude of course I will remove it but otherwise any comment is welcome so have an amazing day hope to see you very soon talk to you later and bye for now